Hello and welcome back to the Flow Station podcast. Today's episode is is from 2019, so deep in the archives. Had to chop it up a bunch. The amount of ums and likes was uh, very cringy to to rewatch. This episode features Cole Johnson. Cole is a fantastic athlete. Was a first team All Conference lacrosse player at Army. And, and Cole shares so many insights on how he built his confidence and mental tools with a sports psychologist named Doxy um, in college. And there's so many great takeaways and tangible tools that you can take into any field that you want. And uh, it's one that uh, I definitely learned a lot in. So hope you enjoy and keep flowing. It really wasn't until college that I kind of understood that it wasn't just physical um, the other, like 60, 40, I like to say 60% mental, 40% physical. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that physical talent carried me all the way through high school and is what got me noticed and allowed me to play at the division one level. Can you give like a, an example or like an overview of your day to day life or day-to-day just kind of like what was outside of just your practice? Like what were some yeah, of the yeah. things you had to do? Um, all right, so day, we'll do day-to-day. So you wake up, 6 o'clock, go to breakfast, 6.30. Um, 7.30, first class starts. Um, you you have, like, class all the way till 11, and then lunch starts. And then after that, one more class in the afternoon from 1 to 2-ish. And then go up. you got an hour till practice starts, so practice starts 3.30, go depending on how pissed coach is it go from <laughs> from all the way from 3 30 to like five or six and then weight room cardio and then shower come down eat dinner like eat study play video games if you want <laughs> did a little bit of that and then go to bed at like 10 11 Gotcha. Do it all over what again. Were, what were some of the craziest things that, I mean, I guess you could disclose the, uh, I mean, you, you've you told us some of the crazy, like, punishments you've had to do and things oh, like yeah. that. Like, is there anything that you could share in that element of, like, this is just completely unique for someone who goes to Army versus someone who's just going to, like, maybe a state school? or Yeah, so one of the classes you take is boxing. Another class you take is combatives, which is just MMA. Mm, That's just what shit. they call it. <laughs> and then you have... Um, during the summer while everyone else is like either playing lacrosse or drinking with their friends or just hanging out having a good time during the summer we have some sort of military training mm. out in the field that we're doing for at least a month or a month and a half so are you are you actually fighting people in those classes like are you going one yeah, on one yeah it's peer on peer and any uh any knockouts for you uh, I dislocated someone's shoulder <laughs> how did that feel you wouldn't tap out so I just kept cranking <laughs> <laughs> just your freshman sophomore year I think you said you weren't really tapping into your fullest potential or was it not until your junior year when you met Doxy or no I met Doxy sophomore year so f- every every uh year Doxy gets up in front of the entire team with all the new freshmen and like gives his little spiel of what he does what he brings to the team he uh runs the center for enhanced performance okay and kind of provides all the athletes at West Point the opportunity to come and learn sports psychology and then apply it and hopefully were any of your coaches kind of put off by him no 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 so coach so they all believed like coach this guy could help you okay got you did you see some of some of your coaches philosophies translate from what you were learning from Doc Z yeah oh yeah okay so it was just a there was a common understanding that this could help the oh, whole yeah. team and yeah, help yeah. the individual. That's coach, cool, man. Coach A, when he was the assistant before taking the head coaching job, he that was kind of like his um, – well, when he wasn't coaching, he would work down at the Center for Enhanced Performance under oh, Doxy. Gotcha. So that – I mean, he learned a lot from that, and then obviously that's why Doxy is so close with the, the lacrosse team as opposed to other teams. Okay, and then your freshman year, you were playing kind of sparingly, or were you playing a good amount? Because I remember you saying you were trying to tap into the starting lineup. Yeah. So my goal was to be a starter. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't achieve that, unfortunately. I was the fourth attackman. So I was like, there's three starters, and then one guy would rotate in. That's who, That was me. I would rotate in. And um, 
I'd probably play like 20, 30 minutes a game. Okay. So at least like half of a quarter. So. And then your sophomore year, like, all right, I need to kick it up a notch. Like, let me go talk to Doc C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sophomore year was like, all right, I've got a, a year under my belt. I know that I can actually compete at this level. Um, cool. And let's do whatever I can to gain that upper hand. Mm-hmm. And so I reached out to Doc C. And what did what did your when you signed there? Obviously, being from the West Coast, you said there's like a little bit of like a knock and maybe like a chip on your shoulder from that because they're they like the East Coast kids right in their backyard. Was yeah. there any like? Did they have expectations for you at all? I mean, obviously, they, they thought you were a good player, but are they thinking that you could have achieved what you did achieve in no, your career? No, I, I talked to Coach A about that, and I think I don't think he knew really what he was getting. Mm. Um, I think it was more like a a chance, like he took a chance on me and yeah. hoped for the best. Um, I was the first player that he ever recruited from Washington. Damn. No other – I was the first Army lacrosse player to be from Washington State. No way. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, I mean, since since I've been there, there's at least three now, maybe four. Wow. So you opened, like, the gateway a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah, Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. So once you, once you figured out, like, okay, I can play at this level, you go to Doxy. What, what is, like, your – um, what is your first impression, like, working with Doxy? And, like, what is, what is the process that he's taking you on? Yeah, so I really went to Doxy and I was like, look, I know I'm capable of a lot more and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to unlock that potential. So I really went to Doxy and I just sat down. He's, it's like he just asked you, like, what what do you want from me? And for what me, gave it, you that awareness, though, that you're like, oh, I know I can do more because maybe some people are unaware that like, damn, I'm not playing up to my potential. They don't do anything about it, but they just feel like they're doing okay. What was there like a moment that really hit you like a breakthrough like damn, like I mm. you know, I'm seeing like inconsistency that I could be doing better. I went to him cuz of that zone. Yeah. Like the when when the reason that you play the game to get to that that feeling where you're just happy to be playing and and mm-hmm. everything you're not thinking not doing anything but you're just playing like the best game you've ever played i went to him i went to him with that question i was like look i know what i'm capable of i've seen myself at my best how do i make that consistent gotcha and that's what i went to him to learn okay and then obviously i mean you know like i would describe it as flow is yeah. same deal yeah. like what what did how did he describe flow and how how would you describe it now like how, what would be your definition of when you're in that state, I mean, you kind of described it like you're not thinking, yeah. you're fully in the moment and you're enjoying it, like you're just having fun. Like what, is there any other elements that you know, like, damn, I'm in flow right now? Or is it just a feeling that you look back on after the game? I mean, I really, I really, no, I consider it like a blackout. Gotcha. But the way I know that I'm actually in the zone is I don't have that little voice in my head. Mm-hmm. That little voice that's always trying to tell you that like you're messing up. Yeah, you're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. Like, if I don't hear that voice and I'm not like constantly trying to fight it off to get in the zone. Yeah, that's when I know I'm in the zone. And it's it's just like when you go to the gym, you're, you're training your muscles mm-hmm. to develop that muscle memory. It's the same thing with the mind. Like the only way that you're gonna train yourself to to think differently, to reshape your mind, to restructure it, the way you go about daily life, approaching a game, playing a game, that's the consistency is what makes it. So once you learn the tools Mm -hmm. from people like Doc C um, that are sports psychologists and know what tools to implement or give you, then you start implementing them. Yeah, it's going to be rocky at first. It was rocky for me at first. But over time, you begin to develop that muscle memory. You Mm -hmm. begin to develop that that uh daily routine that works for you like my pregame routine was the same every single time and then eventually like you figure out what works for you and you keep doing that keep doing that that builds the muscle memory or the mind memory i guess yeah whatever that's called (laughs) when you start on a path like this especially when you're trying to tap in and like become aware of like your thinking trying to change certain habits that you have in your mind you kind of run up against like a default mode network in the brain where it just wants to keep you the same keep everything normal when you say like you 
hit some rocky st- at the start, what kept you wanting to keep going on it, even if it felt like, oh God, this isn't really working? Because I've talked to a lot of guys like that too, where they'll start like a meditation practice or something like that, and they'll feel worse because they're seeing their thoughts now, they're doing this and this. But what was the push for you to keep going? Was it just the belief in Doc Z or was it the belief in, you know, what you were learning was truth, but you just had to keep going down the path? Like what kept you on that in that space to where it's like, okay, yeah, I'm not feeling the benefits right now, but I know eventually it'll pay off. So I think it was a lot harder for me because I started implementing this stuff during preseason. So it was like your sophomore year. Yeah. So I was trying out for that starting position there wasn't that game time feedback it was mm. all just practice um and it was really just that willingness to do whatever it took would it like I'll, I'll try something new like i think coaches are always searching for that little something that gives them the edge over another team it's the mm-hmm. same thing for me as a player i'm searching for like anything that i can do especially being from the west coast having a chip on my shoulder something to prove what what little thing can I do that'll that'll take me over the top over that person that's in front of me? Mm-hmm. And I think that willingness just overcame like the doubt da- any doubt that was in my head. There was never any doubt. Like I I believed that the mind was more important than physical um, traits because I mean look at me I'm like 170 <laughs> pounds and everyone else is like 190 six two. So yeah. I mean. That was that was my tool that allowed me to be better than other people. Was, I'm going to be better that you, in, than you in the psychological game. That is deep, man. So what uh, what could you see in other guys that are maybe more physically imposing that you were like, nah, I got this, dude. Calm. You know, mentally, like what could you see in them that was like, all right, I've already been there before. I see he's going down a path where his mind is taking him out of the game. Like was there any realizations in that aspect? I mean, yeah, some, some defenders would show, like, signs of it. They'd, like, if you beat them, they'd, like, s- smash their stick after you scored a goal or something like that. And then, yeah, I mean, I know you're, I'm in your head. But, <laughs> I mean, I was never one to, like, tr- I, yeah, actually I did start trash talking towards the end of my career. But I refrained from that for a long time just because, like, I just wanted to dominate you in the, the mental battle. Talk about what the process was with Doc Z. Like, what is he, I mean, you go in there with the initial question of flow like or the zone like how do I tap into this what is his protocol at least with you as much as information you want to share I mean so again I came in I was just like hey doc like I want to I want to be able to feel this way Mm -hmm. and I didn't know what what it was called whether it was the flow or the zone I had no idea just like everyone else does they have no idea what it is until you actually learn about it Um, but you know it it's something special Mm-hmm. There, you just don't know what the, the word is for it. Do you feel like you tapped into it in high school at all without even oh, knowing yeah, what it was? Yeah. So you knew Everyone like, taps into it. Yeah, they just you, don't know it. Yeah, which might help in some ways, like not to be intellectually knowing of the state. That's like one key thing is like we, I mean, you talking about flow and someone listening to it is not really going to help them tap into flow unless they really want to try and tap into flow like yeah. or the zone they, it's their experience it's always everyone's unique experience like your tune in might be different than mine but we know that there's like a premise possibility there it's like that's we can tap into that that's an actual thing that we can trust so yeah. when you go in there what's what's his like couple of his practices or a couple of things that you were like all right mentally what do I got to do? What do I got to change? To get in the zone? Yeah. What were some things that maybe you were aware of or you became aware of talking to Doxy that you're like, damn, like I can work on that or that's something I could probably change? I think before I even really worry. So I came in with the question of getting to the zone and then it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa let's, let's just back up here mm-hmm. because there's a whole lot of foundational mm-hmm. work that you need to do before getting to the zone because – Really, you're you're not trying to get you're trying the zones where you want to peak and and everything before that like the game is where you want to peak. So everything leading up to that is all foundational work that allows you to peak during the game, mm-hmm. and then it goes back to foundational work, and then you peak again for the game, mm-hmm. and then foundational work. It's like always constantly. It's just like practice, same thing. So I mean, he was like, let's back up. Um, we gotta. What did he do first? First, it was 
obviously foot working on confidence i think i i believed i had confidence but the confidence wasn't as strong as it needed to be it might have been like uh dependent on you playing well or something like yeah. scoring a first goal yeah now i'm confident versus exactly. like you're just the, constant you're always confidence there. yes so what how did you identify that how, i know there's a I lot of people on it or who, how do i identify yeah it? like when you identified like dang i'm not as confident as i want to be like what how did you reframe it or was it just a quick awareness like dang i'm just not confident in this area now i got to change it up that's a good question i think confidence i think it came with that's a good question let me think about it well it's it's weird because confidence is one of those things like you talk about in the flow state or the zone you're not even thinking anymore you're not in it so it's like if you're thinking like oh i gotta be confident right now you're not really confident yeah go ahead i got it so water boy okay (laughs) no he did he did the same thing he literally did the same thing he played the video when the coach bobby's coach is on the sideline and he's super scared of like whoever that coach was yeah the other coach and he whoever it was told him to picture him as like a a, something funny like Mm. not intimidating and he put like a baby's face on (laughs) i'm not even joking it was literally the same thing he was like if if there's something that intimidates you that like hurts your confidence you just need to reframe it in a positive light interesting that doesn't hurt your confidence and so like once Mm. again you have to practice it and something that intimidates you if you reframe it in the proper light and look at it a different way yeah then it doesn't hurt your confidence yeah and like i have a couple examples of that one of my mentors who seems similar to doxy in a lot of ways at least what he helped me realize or he gave me the possibility of understanding this stuff was he's just like bro he, he always asked me like when did it get serious like you got to start laughing at yourself in the moment laugh through a dumb workout laugh through some like you you know you miss a shot laugh at it because what that does is it takes the pressure away of it being so serious like even when i do these podcasts like i had an nba guy come on i'm like kind of nervous and stuff like that my buddy and i are laughing at after it's like dude you had an NBA guy drive from Bellevue all the way to Renton in a real estate office called the flow station. Like we just kind of made a joke of this whole thing. It's like, it's not some serious thing. It's just, you know, what we've created it to be. And so I changed, I shifted the perception of it in a certain way. Dude, I thought, I just thought of this, but back in fourth grade. Okay. When I was still playing baseball and I was like working with a pitching coach who was on the Mariners he told me like when I was pitching like a when like you're in a tough scenario scenario where it's like two strikes and three I don't even know what the words are balls yeah balls yeah. <laughs> Just, I don't watch baseball as you can tell three, Leslie, two strikes what we got <laughs> tap in Leslie three balls um he was like on the bottom of your hat like on the bill literally just put like something that makes you fun like I put a comic and like you just look at that and it makes you laugh and then you go interesting yeah it's, it's just like it that, lightens it that up. little thing lightens it up. It takes the pressure away. Yeah. It increases your confidence. Interesting. Well, it's it, the same thing. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I mean, that's, but that's what I think is cool of the reason why I wanted to start this is it gives people like at least a chance to hear it. Like, so that pitching coach probably has no idea that you would, it would trigger something in you, but maybe it, it's what led you to believe in Docs even more. Yeah. It's like he gave you an opportunity to see like, okay, there's certain things that work mentally. Um, and so that's why I also think like comedians, they do a good job at like lightening every situation. Like they'll kind of poke fun at, you know, maybe someone's identifying really heavily as something that they do. You poke fun at it a little bit. It takes the seriousness away. Everyone can kind of laugh at themselves. Everyone's more free in the moment. Was there ever that discussion of you kind of straying away from your identity as a lacrosse player or maybe just being the the West Coast kid? Like was there – um did he have to assist you in that way to make it so you could tap into the game more often? No, I mean, I never, it was, for me, it's always like, it's cliche, but the next play, like Mm -hmm. one play at a time. And then once that plays in the books, it's in the books, like forget it. Can't do anything about it. So it's the next, next play, next play, next play. Um, I mean, the one thing doc, the only time that I really look back at stuff was when Doxy taught me like, because I would have bad games. I mean, mm-hmm. it's inevitable. Everyone has bad games. And I was like, 
doc how do i how do i like I, i'm not supposed to think about these like i'm supposed to scrap them but like i do still like it's inevitable you're still going to think about those plays and like what you could have done better mm-hmm. and he's like well what you need to do is um like close your eyes and create the vivid replay in your head like as vivid as possible like you can feel everything and then reshape that event in the positive light that you wanted to actually have it mm-hmm. uh, like come out as it's so like if i got the ball taken away from me in like the, the last 15 seconds of the game and we were down one it's like all right well i'm going to look back at this but i'm going to look at it in a positive light of what like i wanted to happen i'm going to create that muscle memory of what should have happened yeah so it's like i dodged i beat him and i scored the game winning goal talk about your visualization then because it sounds like that's something you tapped into pretty heavily oh yeah um for whatever reason i tapped into that in high school i don't know if anyone told me i was just kind of doing it (laughs) pre-game and i would see some crazy stuff man like i would see things happen in the games that i was visualizing i was just like thinking about them you know dreaming about them whatever it would occur in a game or would happen you know in practice or something like that how did it how long did it take you to get good at visualization I guess where you could make it as vivid as possible where you're feeling the moment and you're not just like in your head thinking about it so I mean once again it's just the the muscle memory Mm -hmm. thing that I keep beating to death but um once you learn it just practicing over and over and over again but what I really liked about it and the way he made it seem so appealing to me was he's like I forget who the receiver was that he told me the story about, but some Buffalo Bills receiver. Um, it was obviously <laughs> some <laughs> snowy day up in Buffalo, and all the other receivers were out there in the snow, like minus whatever degrees it was up there, like trying to catch the ball and get better in practice. But mm-hmm. there was one receiver who was in like the training room, and he was just like zenned out on one of the, the, the benches like with like a towel over his head, closing his eyes, going through mental reps like creating that vivid image of exactly what those guys outside were doing Mm. but doing it in his head and creating that mental muscle memory as opposed to physically being out there yeah and it it basically is the same thing as actually going through it so when you're not in the field like actually practicing like i would do it 10 minutes before bed every night you just go through and like for me it was like my right hand dodging to the right side was the toughest thing for me so just creating like everything like the Mm. practice field as vivid as possible like the turf exactly as you memorize it and creating like the lacrosse stick being able to feel in your hand feeling like the the sweaty pads on your body all that stuff creating it as real as possible and then going through those actual mental reps like physically dodging how you would in real life in your head it's the same thing as doing it in real life that's cool man so it's a way to get extra practice in yeah while you're just recovering what else did doxy assist you with um if you wanted to add anything else with him that you're able to apply now uh in your life and inside sport um journaling i think I haven't been applying lately, so mm-hmm. I've been I've been failing myself. <laughs> but 2020 resolution. There we go. I'm gonna be journaling. Um, yeah, I think that was a huge one for me. I keep a little uh, black notebook in my locker, and every day after practice, come back and three things I did well, and then everything else would just get I erase it. Nice. Yeah. So it's really just building on only positive stuff stuff that you do well and creating that foundation of stuff that you have done well and you just every game i would go back and start with monday and i just read through all the positive things i did throughout the week nice yeah so come game time like all i have is these positive things that i've done Mm. and that that was the foundation that i used to to get into the zone your pre-game routine what was the process to kind of close out those distractions so that you're just locked in the phone on airplane mode <laughs> actually so yeah. the phone was like a big one like you knew that that was going to deter you off of flow oh yeah cuz people would text you before the game people like girlfriends friends no oh my gosh you were ruining his flow <laughs> no they wouldn't because you just put it on airplane yeah, mode yeah no i got you when you when you say that you have to kind of fend off those other 
thoughts and those other things that come in. Yeah. Is that, is that where the non-judgmental piece comes into play Yeah, that you learned? And so what was that? Like, was there a conscious, like, no, it's all good. Or was it more of just like a redirect, like you said, back to the moment, back to the, the space? The little voice. No, I mean, Doxy just told me like whenever that little voice happens, just tell it to F off. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, it's just that simple. Like, yeah. You, you you have the little voice. Everyone has a little voice. So mm-hmm. Just tell it to yeah. leave. No. no matter what it's saying, like, you know that none of it's real. But sometimes if you let your mind catch on to that little voice, it'll lead you in crazy places. Or exactly. Make your game just terrible. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. As always, please reach out to me on my Instagram at Flow Station Podcast or visit my website, willwellnesscoaching.com if you need any support or one-on-one coaching uh, to help you tap into your flow.